because, because Goliath can't see him all that well. And you can't hit what you can't see. You can't kill what you can't. Oh, y'all better get this. So Goliath said, play fair, David. I want you to come to me man to man. Come up real close to me so I can fight you. But David said, no, I'm not crazy. I'm not coming to you. You see, he tells David, how dare you come to me with sticks like a dog? Uh, read the Bible. Where did David get a stick from? The Bible said David had a slingshot. And if he did have a stick, he may have had a shepherd's stick, but he didn't have two sticks. So what is Goliath seeing then? Oh, y'all better hear. What is he seeing? Is he seeing David the right way? See, Goliath may have had the advantage of being tall and being strong, but he had a disadvantage of not being able to see well. Let me go to you guys real quick. Because the enemy does not have the foresight to see you the way God sees you. The enemy must focus on your past because he can't see the future that God has for you. Therefore, he would always bring up what you were and what you did because he did not have the vision to see what you will be and what you will do. Uh, the enemy must focus on what he sees on the outside because he can't see what's inside of you. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God searches the what? Oh, y'all better hear this? This is one of the reasons that the enemy wants you to come close to him. I'm preaching to y'all. This is the end of reason why the devil wants you so close to him. He wants to be close to him so he can become intimate with you and intimate enough to find out your weakness. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know what woman is in your way. I want to know what man is in your way. I want to know what kind of vice, what kind of sin is in your way. I'm going to preach Tuesday night. Y'all might hear it again. There are certain sins that don't tempt everybody. Don't think that because you like it, everybody else like it. That ain't always true. There are some things that you don't need the Holy Ghost to stop doing. I'm going to say it again Tuesday night so y'all can hear it. And so you may hear it again. But, but guess what? I don't need the Holy Ghost to stop using cocaine. I never use cocaine. I've never shot up heroin. I'm scared of death of needles. So the Holy Ghost did not get me off heroin. I was never tempted by heroin. Y'all better hear this. But if I begin to be around the enemy enough, he figures out what's right, what I like, don't he? He figures out what you like and what, what makes you tick, what begins to tempt you. He understands those things. He wants you to be close enough to him so I can learn your weakness and use your weakness against you. This is what happened in the case of Samson. Delilah, Delilah had to become close enough with him and intimate enough with him so he can tell her the source of his strength. The devil wants you close to him so I can find out what is your strength so I can use that against you. What's your weakness so I can use that against you. The reason why the enemy defeats us is because we are too close to it. Y'all don't want to hear that. Amen. Preach about living right now. The reason why he beats us, we're too close to him. He knows what you like to watch on TV. He knows what you like to talk about. He knows what you like to see. He knows all those things. So we are too close to him and we're not close enough to God. Am I being real? You see, we spend so much time with him and telling him everything about us and he knows us too well. He knows how to make you see. Oh, so we say, oh, that person made me because oh, the devil knows what will tick you off. He knows what will, what will get you there because you spend too much time with him. And we don't want to hear this in the body of Christ. We don't want to hear this at all. We think that everything is just about me. Everything is just about me. No, the devil knows you better than you think he does. And only because you were too close to him. You were too close. And because he knows us so well, he learns our weaknesses and our issues. And he uses those against us. He knows us on an intimate level because we have become intimate with him. It's not, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. Because we are not doing the right thing. But I dare you to draw nigh to God. And let him draw nigh to you. And it's time for you to resist the devil. So that he can flee from you. If you get him out of your camp. If you stay out of his camp. He won't know enough about you to defeat you. Mm. He don't like me too much. But it's okay. That's the truth right there. See sometimes people spend no time in the word. But want to be strong. We spend no time with God. But we think we're so strong. But if you spend time with God and time away from the devil, guess what? The devil can't mess with you no more. Ah, so, so here's another thing. Goliath's armor was, was heavy and his weapons were very heavy. They were too heavy. Goliath may have been strong, but guess what? He was slow. Very slow. The Bible says all the chain mail, all the, the weapons weighed so much on, on him. He was not agile and quick enough to fight somebody like David. That is why he wanted David to come close to him. It is only if David comes in arm's reach of the life that the strength would matter. Isn't that true? It's only if you get close enough to me that I can begin to use my strength against you. 
There is a reason. I'm going to preach. There's a reason that God said for you to lay aside every weight and the sin. Y'all better hear me. You need to be unhindered by stuff that tries to slow you down. The devil may be strong, but he is carrying hatred. He's carrying envy. He's carrying jealousy. He's carrying pride. He's carrying malice. He's carrying strife. And it slows him down. His jealousy and his pride, they clouded his vision to a point that God kicked him out of heaven. Am I being real in the house? Yeah. And so, if those things weigh him down, what do you think they'll do to you? Yeah. What are they going to do to you? If they were the devil down, if they cloud his vision, what do you think they're going to do to you if you carry hatred your whole life? Yeah. You carry jealousy. You carry envy. And let me tell you something. Some people have been legitimately hurt. You got to stop saying that in church that people have not been hurt. Some people have been legitimately hurt, but you have got to let things go, not because of that person, but because of you. Y'all better hear this because maybe you can't advance until you let some stuff go. Now I'm just being real. So, so you have to learn to let some stuff go if you want to win this battle. You can't care, keep caring what people did to you. You got to let it go after a while. You got to deal with it. I said one thing about life. Whatever you don't reveal, you cannot heal. So I got to deal with it. I got to see it. But then also I got to get to a point that, Lord, maybe I'm never getting an apology. Maybe they'll never apologize. Maybe they'll never say, maybe they'll never figure it out. But guess what, God? I got to get to a point where I can move on with my life. Oh, y'all, they heard me. Because I can't keep fighting with all those things. You can't serve God. Y'all better hear this. With hatred, with envy, with jealousy, with strife, and pride weighing you down. Those things are holding you back. And when you operate out of those motivations, you are playing the enemy's game. I am not trying to prove somebody wrong by my success. I want to be successful because God has it in his plan for me to be successful. I'm not trying to say, nah, 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 to somebody who couldn't believe in me. I don't care if you don't believe in me. I want to have what God wants to have for me because it is in my destiny. Oh, y'all better hear this. I cannot let what someone said be my motivation. I've been preaching about that, y'all, because, because we say that too often, don't we? We say, you know, let somebody tell me what I can't do. I'm going to try to do it. No, it shouldn't be about them. It should be about you. What do you want out of your life? What do you want? You're carrying those things. And so, and when you get successful, guess what? They're right there with you. Man. And you carry them unannounced and un unbeknownst to you. You've been carrying things. This is why David turned down Saul's armor. Saul said, look, try on my armor. Here's my sword. Try on all these things. Let me tell you something. I love this about the scripture. I love talking about, talking about this. If Saul wasn't confident enough in his armor to fight Goliath, what makes you think I'm confident enough in your armor to fight Goliath? If you ain't going to fight him using this stuff, why are you going to give it to me? Amen. You ever thought about that before? Amen. If it's such great armor, if it's so good, how come you ain't got to fight? Mm. Remember this about advice, y'all. I know this about advice. If people give you advice that they don't use, why are you taking it? Well, why, why are you taking advice that they don't use? Now, I, I heard someone say before. They said, you know what? I can give you advice. I can tell you what not to do. Because I've done some things in my life that messed me up. Now, that's good advice. But when someone tells you to do something that they're not doing, something is wrong with that. Oh, y'all better hear this. See, you don't have to, to do those things. David had already beat a lion and a bear without Saul's sword and without Saul's armor. You don't need hate to motivate you to, to succeed. You don't need envy to push you to better yourself. You don't have to create strife to get ahead. God bless you to overcome without it before, and he will do it again. You have been blessed with the tools to bring down any giant that you're going to face. Amen. Get the tools already. So my last point, I'm on out of here. You have to use what you have and do what you know. Let me tell you something, everybody inside here. You are more powerful than you think. You are more of a threat to the enemy than what you think you are. David's slingshot was powerful. It's not a child's toy. So what we think about slingshot, we think about Bart, don't we? On the Simpsons, a little slingshot doing like this. That is not what David had, child. David was not just this little small little slingshot like a toy. In fact, it's in fact an incredibly devastating weapon. If you do the calculations on the ballistics, on how fast this, these rocks can be thrown, on the stopping power of the rock fire from David's sling, it is roughly equal to the stopping power of a 45 caliber handgun. These guys, I'm going to hear this. 
these guys with these slings were known to shoot these things so fast and so uh, so uh, so accurately, they could begin to throw, throw up rocks and hit a rock with a little rock. Y'all better hear this. They could bring down birds in flight with just a stone. They were known to be very fearsome because even the enemy did not like the slingers. Every army had a group of slingers who would take rocks and sling at the enemy. And the enemy hated those rocks. I'm going to tell you why. Because they couldn't fight against rocks, y'all. Mm. So they can fight against people, but they can't fight against rock. And so when David came down there, he was already there, and he could easily beat Goliath. Easily beat Goliath. It's a good scene. I love this scene. And, and y'all maybe watch uh, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This is it's a scene where, where Indiana Jones is going to fight this guy, and he had his sword, and he, he's doing all this stuff. His sword is showing out, and Indiana Jones is going to fight this guy. Indiana Jones is do, doing all this stuff with his sword, and he's about from here to me where uh, the Dickie Jamie is, and guess what he does? He takes out his gun and shoots the guy. Because I don't care what kind of ninja you are. I don't care how good you are that night. If you can't get close to, to, to cut me with it, you are ineffective. And if I can stand right here and shoot you, I'm going to shoot you from right here. Can I preach a little bit? You ain't got to get all the devil's mess. Y'all better hear this. All of us have all this stuff to fight the devil. God says you can send prayer from right where you are. Y'all better hear this. You can send God the Holy Ghost from right where you are. Don't get entangled with all that stuff. You trying to get in, and you all messed up by how big the devil is. Because the Bible says he's as a roaring lion going through the earth trying to see who he can devour. But guess what? He's not going to be close enough to me to devour me. I'm going to stand where I am and say, the blood, the blood of Jesus be against you. The word of Jesus be over y'all better hear this. So David was not an underdog the way we think he was. He was more powerful than anybody could be against Goliath. As long as he did not fight the way Goliath fought. If he wants to fight and wrestle with this guy, oh, he's going to get killed. But if I stand out far enough, now I begin to shoot you from here. I ain't going to get close to you. You don't know anything about me. I don't know anything about you. I know one thing. You came against the God of, 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 of Israel, the only living God. And if you speak against him, you're speaking against me. So I'm going to stand right here. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to call y'all right here. You see, you see, I got to get out of here. You got some weapons that you need to use to defeat the enemy. The first weapon, we got to talk about this one because this is an awesome one. The blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. It is so powerful that even the Father, oh y'all got to hear this, even God himself will not step over his son's blood to get to me. Because I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. And so even God, the Father, when I mess up, I deserve to die. For the wages of sin is death. But Jesus said, I'll die for him. I'll go to the cross. I'll shed my blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so even though I've messed up and I've done some things in my life, the blood of Jesus is on my heart. It has washed me. That even God will not try to come get me. But you better hear this. If God, the Father, will not step over his son's blood, what makes you think any demon, any devil, will step on the blood of Jesus? Y'all better hit me. Uh -huh. So, 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 the second thing is the power of your testimony. Somebody say testimony. We are overcomers today because of what God did for us yesterday. Whenever Goliath tried to intimidate me, the devil tried to say what's not going to happen. Oh, you're going to be sick and you ain't going to get well. You're going to be broke your whole life. You're never going to have this. I must bring up my testimony. I must tell him that when I was sick before, God raised me up, baby. When I had no money, baby, God made a way somehow. And there's some dead lions. There's some dead bears that I've gone through in my past. I can show you a lion that was sick it's dead right now. I can show you a bear that was lacking. It's dead right now. There's some dead lions. There's some dead bears in my past. I remind him. I have a testimony. Would you tell somebody? Y'all got a testimony. Uh -uh. So, so the third thing. The power of your prayers. The effectual and fervent prayers of righteous people. It matters much. It availeth much. The Bible says they are and let me tell you something. I don't pray just to be praying. I don't pray to check out a box. I pray with the anointing and with the expectation that God's going to do something. So don't call me to pray over you if you ain't got no faith. Don't call me to pray with you if you don't expect anything. But when I show up, I want God to move. I believe he's going to move. I preach by 
by myself in this Anglican church. I'll pray by myself in this Anglican church. But if somebody is out of here, could you testify that you did some praying and God did something? I begin to pray and God begin to move. I thank God that He is a God that answered my prayer. I do what I can do. But when I've done all I can do, I've said all I can say. I just go on my knees. I can do the possible.